Hi everyone, I'm Tracy and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my favorite brushes to do finishing powder with. Um, before we get started, I'm going to just really quickly, in case you're not as familiar with finishing powders versus setting powders. Setting powder is, you know, something like this by Terry Hydro Powder, something that is meant to kind of like mattify or you know set the tackiness of your concealer or foundation and they tend to be sometimes they're pigmented sometimes not so much and a finishing powder something like the uh, the hourglass ambient lighting powders these have um, like reflective qualities also the hourglass powders they give a certain like blurred effect or soft focus effect to your skin um, also the chantecaille blur powder i consider this a finishing powder and the dior powder no powder this one has a little bit of shimmer in general a finishing powder has like some reflective particles usually mica sometimes shimmer um, this dior one is really nice because it is not mattifying it does create a little bit of a sheen but it's not shiny it's not going to make your skin look greasy or anything like that and when it comes to finishing powder it is a little tricky to find the right brush and the wrong brush can really um, like make or break the results you get from a finishing powder so i thought this would be an important um, video I thought some of you might find it helpful it took some time for me to figure out you know what kind of brush to use for finishing powder I had been using those hourglass powders for uh, some time and just wondering why I couldn't see a difference anyhow it was all about using the right brush so uh, also the right brush is going to be depend on the type of powder or you know product you're using uh, something like this Dior no powder is kind of like a putty um, it's a very, very hard uh, formula. So with this one, you're going to need a denser brush. But let me go over the brushes and then I can give you guys recommendations on what type of product the brush is best with in my experience. And I've been really getting into finishing powders this past year. I tried a lot of different ones. And um, it's something that I, I just ignored for a long time. But now that I'm getting the hang of it, I've um, grown to really appreciate what it does for the skin and the effects that it can give. So let me start out with an oldie but a goodie, and that is the Koyuto CB Japan Fupa 14. Now, this is probably one of the first finishing powder brushes I got. And what makes this nice is because it's so dense, it's a scroll and goat hair mix, it really buffs the, the product in so it's not going to leave your skin looking powdery or in, in any way and because of the density it will kind of blend out your like bronzer blush or um, highlighter it might kind of make it a little bit less noticeable so that's kind of what you can expect from a denser shorter hairbrush but again this is good for a harder to pick up product like the Dior no powder uh, another one that I really like and this is one I've had for a long time and this is a blush brush but I do like it for finishing that's the Chikohoto Z8 if you want a bigger one you can go ahead and get like the big daddy you know the Z1 it's not necessary I prefer a finishing powder brush to be a little bit smaller you know depending on where I'm using it because a brush like this is going to get hard it's going to be hard to get into the under eye area or like on the side of the nose so I'm, this Z8 is just such a good blush brush and a good finishing powder brush because the hairs are so soft. It's not super dense. It's not going to lift or move your base makeup and it's going to very lightly apply that powder so you don't have to worry about your skin looking heavy because with these finishing powders a little if you go a little overboard it can make your skin look worse. It can make you look dry and bring out the fine lines. So you know just in, just go slow i would say for this step definitely go slow because you don't want to ruin your entire look with too much finishing powder so that's the z8 or the z1 but i feel like the results from the z8 are going to be very similar you can even use the z8 to kind of like without any powder kind of buff in um you know like your blush or a bronzer 
and it should kind of give it a little bit of a sheen if you don't want your skin to look as matte so yeah I really do like this one another one that I this is pretty new but I like this for all over setting powder as well as finishing powder and that's the Chicohoto MKSK now this is limited edition right now it's available but probably won't be for long and what I like this one for is is because it's big so it'll get the job done really fast but it's also good for getting into this area because it's pinched and it's just a, a joy to use I really really do like this brush and I'm sure this is the only um, limited edition Makie one I have, but I, I'm pretty sure the other ones will work really great for finishing powder. And yeah, I'm really enjoying this step because if you use the right brush, it's, it's just such a joy to do. You know, it's not a task. It's, it really makes your um, makeup application so much more enjoyable. So that's the MKSK. So and, and this one I've been picking up a lot recently and that's the Hokoto GF2. Now this is made of gray scroll hair, really soft gray scroll hair. The hairs are longer so it's going to be very gentle and you know not disturb your makeup. It's not going to do as much buffing but it will be very light. It will apply the powder very evenly and very lightly. So you know, if you're just looking for a very slight, subtle dusting of the finishing powder, I would say go with this one. Also, if you're concerned about your base makeup lifting, I would say of all the brushes I'm going to talk about, this one is the least likely to do that. And that makes this brush, to me, um, such a, you know, just such a good one to have. And it's also really nice for bronzer, powder bronzer, if you want to just very um, lightly build the pigment and also it could do blush in a bigger area too. So that's the Hokoto GF2. I'll show these to you a little bit more while I look for the next one. MKSK Hokoto GF2. And the Z1 and the Z8. So there's a pretty significant size difference and um, a pretty significant price difference. So I would say the Z8 is just way more versatile. Okay, and then these two, these are fairly newer to me, but I do really like them for finishing powder. One is the Hakuhodo G6440. I really like this for the Shantikai blur powder and the Hourglass um, ambient lighting powders, mainly because of the shape and it gets into these areas really well. It also fits into the Hourglass mini pans really well. This is a mix of squirrel hair and goat hair so it's not going to be like as soft as the squirrel hair brushes but they're, they're very soft and um, some of you might know this is like my favorite type of hair this mix and yeah it's just it really like with the Chantecai powder it really makes this product shine like it really smooths out your skin it's also really good with the Dior powder no powder it will like somewhat heavily apply it. It's not going to be like a super light application, but I've never had a problem like over powdering with this brush. And again, it's such a joy. It will kind of like take down some of the pigment on like your blush and bronzer, but you know, that's totally fine with me. And in the same vein, I also like the Hakuhodo G502. Now, more recently, I've been using it for bronzer, but I started out using it with setting powder and finishing powder, and I, I do really like it for those purposes. And yeah, it's just, again, a very, very soft brush. The shape is good for getting into different areas of the face, and it's also a really great bronzer brush. So the G502 all over an all-around amazing brush I really really like this one and I think that's gonna do it I'm gonna mention some that are very popular and kind of explain why I don't use them the Sonya G buffer pro and smooth buffer these are really great brushes they're unique in that they're the dyed goat hair and they've got this very flat top I did use these but I do feel like for my makeup needs, it's a little too dense. 
and I do feel like it kind of takes away my base makeup a little bit and it tones things down maybe a little bit too much but if you're someone that goes heavy-handed on like bronzer blush and highlighter you might like something like this because it really just smooths everything out I mean all of these brushes will but this really will like if you kind of see where your blush is you know swirl this around with some finishing powder and it should make it look so much better so I don't I didn't bring the smooth buffer out but smooth buffer is just like a smaller version of this uh, another option is the Koyuto Yoshiki um, face brush I've been using this for foundation but you can use it with like the Dior no powder because of the density it picks up these types of formulas really well the downside is that the shape doesn't allow for getting into a lot of areas but uh, as far as the price goes, this is a really great brush. If you don't like it for finishing powder, it's a really good liquid or cream foundation brush. And it's also a good cream um, bronzer or contour brush. So, yeah, that's the Koyuto Yoshiki. And then just because I feel like these are brushes that a lot of people have. If you're looking into like, for example, the Refer 30, like a big domed goat hair brush. You could use this for finishing and setting powder. This is the Hakuhodo J509 and the Bristles Beauty F10. And I guess, you know, I've never really used these a whole lot, mainly because, because of the material and because of the density, it kind of puts on the powder a little too heavy for my preference, but they are really nice to have. And I would say, all three are fairly equal as far as, as um, performance, but then again, I haven't used these a whole lot, but I just wanted to give you guys my opinion on these. If you have like oilier skin and you're really trying to set your foundation, then this is a good one to have, but definitely not necessary. I think, yeah, I think that's gonna do it. So um, I hope this helps you guys out a lot. And if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments or, or find me on Instagram and you can message me there. All right, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.